bless you. Amen. We thank the Lord that we can sing the songs of praise for him. Amen. Amen. We are not coming to sing because we want you to see us. That's not the reason. The reason is because we want to give glory and honor to the Lord Amen. and to bless you. <coughs> Amen. Uh, brother um, Caleb, we're going to sing that Isaiah uh, 40, verse 31. If you can reflect it, if it's possible. These are the eagles. This is the eagles class. Amen. And then tomorrow, if the Lord tarries, there will be ministers. If the Lord tarries, there will be song leaders. Amen. If the Lord tarries, there will be fathers and there will be mothers. So it's very important to set up that foundation correctly because once it goes up without proper setting, it's almost impossible to, to go and rework the foundation when the house is standing. <clears throat> okay, let's go for it. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord, teach me, Lord, to Teach me, Lord, to wait. Amen. We all can just stand up again. We've got a fair bit of exercise today, eh? <laughs> Amen. Oh, who loves the Lord? Amen. 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 Let's just go into to worship, and we now just worship our King, the true King. Amen. As the deer panted for the water, so my soul longs to you. You alone are my heart, desire. Brother, even though you are my king, and I love you more than any other, so much more than anything you alone. You my strength, my shield, to you alone does my spirit heal. 
And you alone are my heart, desire, and I long to worship you. Amen. And I love you more than gold or silver, only you can satisfy. Oh, thank you, Lord. And you alone are the real a joy giver and the apple of my eye. Hallelujah. Cause you alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone does my spirit heal. And you alone are my heart's desire and I long. To were you alone, oh, you alone, you alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone does my spirit yield. You alone are my heart. Desire and I long to worship you. Amen. Oh Lord, I long to worship you, Father. And may our spirit yield to you, Father, today. As I've set my wings on the winds of faith, and I will fly. In a higher place, do not struggle. It's by grace. Set my wings, set my wings. Let's sing, set my wings. I've set my wings to the winds of faith. I will rise to a higher place. I do not struggle. It's by grace. Set your wind, set your wind on the winds of faith. Cause there are two roads. You may take the one by side. Oh, help us, Lord. Oh, to take that one, Lord Jesus. But the Word of God and what you see. Oh, what you believe. Oh, set my wings, set your wings to the winds of faith. I will fly to a higher place. I do not struggle, it's my grace. Set my wings. To the winds of faith. So watch your knees and watch your cry, watch your mountain much too high. Does it seem impossible? Amen. Use that word. Amen. By and by. Oh, it will move, or you will fly. To the winds of faith, we 
winds of fate, you will fly, oh, you will fly, to a higher place, a higher place, do not struggle, it's by grace, set your wings, oh, set your wings, to the winds of fate, to the winds of fate. Oh, watch the eagle in the sky. He does not struggle, and he does not strive. Oh, for the power that makes him rise is already in the sky Amen Set your wings I've set my wings To the winds of faith To the winds of faith I will fly To a higher place In a higher place Do not struggle I do not struggle It's by grace Set your wings to the winds of fate. Set your wings to the winds of fate. You will fly to a higher place. Do not struggle. It's by grace. Set your wings to the winds of faith. Hallelujah. That's why we're here for, aren't we? Set our wings to the winds of faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, musicians. Thank you, Brother Armand. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you all this morning. Amen. Trust you all. Everyone's well and. Good to be in the house of the Lord together. Amen. Oh, I, I left the clicker, I think, in there somewhere. Anyway. Um, hey, God bless you. Let's just turn in the scripture to, uh, I just want to go to the Song of Solomon, chapter 8. And then we're going to go to, I'm um, sorry, that, uh, yeah, I'll, that's the problem with me and slideshows because things change. We'll come back to this at some time. So Song of Solomon, uh, verses, uh, chapter 8, and we're going to read from verse 5 down to verse 7. And then we're going to go to Matthew 21. Amen. So, who is this that cometh up from the wilderness leaning upon her beloved? I raised thee up under the apple tree. There thy mother brought thee forth. There she brought thee forth that bare thee. Set me as a seal upon thy heart, and as a seal upon thy arm. For love is strong as death, jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which have the most vehement flame. Many, are, many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it shall be utterly contemned. Now, and let's go to Matthew. I don't have it on here, but let's go to Matthew chapter 21. And we're just going to read from uh, verse 4 down to verse 11. And so I don't have it on the PowerPoint. As I say, things change. Uh, all this was done, so this is Jesus telling his disciples to to go get the colt uh, that he'd ride upon into, um, into Jerusalem. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which is spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh upon uh, uh, unto thee, sorry, meek, and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they sat him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. 
and the multitudes that went before and that followed cried saying hosanna to the son of david blessed he's is he that cometh in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest and when he was come into jerusalem all the city was moved saying who is this and the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Right. Amen. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord Jesus, Lord, as we are standing here with our heads bowed, Lord, this morning, we're just asking that once again you would walk among us, Lord. You would speak to us like only you can. Lord, you would touch our hearts like only you can. Lord, we just want to just invite you to, to this building today, and not just this building, but to our hearts. Lord, may you come to where we are. Lord, you always come where you're invited. Lord, as even Simon the Pharisee would invite you to a feast, but Lord, you knew he wouldn't make you welcome, but Lord, because he invited you, you came. Lord, how much more us, Lord? We don't want to just put you in the corner with unwashed feet, not kissed welcome, not anointed, but Lord, we want you to take the highest place in our lives. Lord, we want you to be the most welcome guest in our lives. And not just a guest that would come and go, but one that would stay and make his abode forever, oh God. So, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that that would be our heart's desire, each one. And dear God, we just want to pray for those who are, Lord, sick, who couldn't be here, Lord, today. Lord, we know it is this time of year, but Lord, you're our healer. Amen. So Father, I pray you'd go and touch each one that's not here. There's quite a few. Lord, I pray you'd be their portion, dear God. May you strengthen them, Lord. Father, may you just take the life out of that virus in the name of Jesus Christ, and may they get healthy and well. Lord, we're so thankful we can ask these things because by your stripes, Lord, they are already healed. Amen. Lord, you already purchased their healing. And dear God, we just want to also remember in prayer, Brother Ron Peterson and the Amen. saints there in Phoenix, oh God. And no doubt, Lord, because there's so many cases in that country, Lord, no doubt there's other believers, Lord, who are afflicted. So, Lord, we want to pray for them, oh God. We want to ask you to touch them and make them well. And But, Lord, not only just your children, but, Lord, humanity is suffering. Father, I pray you touch each one, Lord, that has been struck down by any sickness around the globe, Father. Lord, we know your blood has already healed, purchased their healing, O oh God. Father, by your stripes they were healed. It's a done work, O oh God. It's a finished work. So we pray you would touch suffering humanity. And Lord, not just that they'd be physically healed, but Lord, save their souls, Lord. Father, may you grant it, dear God. And may you just anoint the service, Lord. Anoint speaker and hearer one more time, Father. May your the purpose that we are assembled, Lord, may it be done. In Jesus Christ's name we ask. Amen. 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 God bless you, friends. You may have your seats uh, this morning. I wonder if I could take a title. Um, I want to take this question. Sorry, where are we? Who is this that cometh from the wilderness leaning upon her beloved? Who is this woman? Who is this woman? You know, there's always a question. You know, people look and they wonder, who are these people? You know, we read there in... Um, you know, we read there in Matthew 21 that you know, the whole city was stirred. You know, Brother Brown dramatizes it in the message. What is the, you know, the attraction on the mountain? He'd say it was like a hot kind of day and there was an expectation in the air and people were gripped by, you know, by, 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 by what was going on. And, and, and many were just caught up in the moment. They didn't really fully even grasp what was going on. Even the disciples didn't really know what was going on, you know. You know, the master just said, go to the certain village. You'll see a cult there by the certain house and go loose it and bring it here. And, you know, you know, and, but, but prophecy was being fulfilled. And, you know, the word of God was being manifest. And here was the son of David. Here was the king of kings riding into the, riding into the city. And, and we know if you look at history, there were many great conquerors rode into that city. Many great conquerors. Alexander the Great would ride in there. You know, king David would ride in there. Many great men, many great generals, many great armies would march in. But here was the greatest one that would ever stand upon the earth in human flesh. Here was the greatest. He was more than a general. He was more than a king, but he was the creator himself made flesh. And he was riding up into the city. Now, it's amazing when you think about it. In the human mind, you'd think he'd have the finest, finest horse that there could ever be. You know, they would search literally the earth for the finest stallion or the finest, whatever it may be, the finest horse, whatever color, you know, whatever height, however many hands tall, you know, and it'd, it'd be arrayed in the finest robes and the fine, you know, and the, and the procession would be so great. There'd be, you know, everyone would be, you know, dressed up, you know, you know, the best way they can be. Who's seen a military parade? You know, who's seen like when, you know, royalty dies in England and you know, there's a great pomp and ceremony as the carriage goes 
pass through wherever it goes and you know there's all the troops and they're all there you know you think it would be that kind of procession but here were people a bunch of ragtag people cutting branches off palm trees throwing their coats down and i doubt you know they were ever really very clean you know a bunch of ragtag bunch of peasants we would call them you know just to the natural eye now and they were laying down their coats, they were throwing down the palm trees, they were crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he that you know, comes in the name of the Lord. And, and, and the scribes and Pharisees, because the whole city was moved, and they said, who is this? What is going on here? What's this noise? You know, this is not what normally happens on this kind of day. What's going on here? And, and, and they told them, this is Jesus of Nazareth, the prophet of Galilee. Hallelujah. But what was happening? The word was being fulfilled. There was an attraction. There was a drawing. There was a pull. But when they looked at him, they were saying, no, this is not the son of David. This is not him, but it was him. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I showed you, wait, let's just, I showed you this photo picture, rather this drawing last week. And I was talking about the heart of the people and, you know, how they're prepared and the ark was, you know, there. But, you know, we would think if something was greater than this, it would look greater, right? It would look greater. So the temple would be bigger. The, you know, the, the, the altar would be fancier. You know, the people would be more finely dressed. It would be, you know, the trumpets would be tuned better. We'd think it would be greater. But the thing is, as the Lord uh, changes his form, I'd say the outward appearance actually does not look greater, but the inward glory is far greater. Right? So, so you take this now. Here is God coming to dwell among his people in the temple that, that his son David had a desire to build. And we know that when the ark took its place, the glory of the Lord filled the place and the ministers couldn't minister. It was a glorious occasion. But we know that that wasn't God's final resting place. You know, he says God doesn't dwell in a temple made with hands. He doesn't need man to craft stones and build plans and, you know, put in a foundation and put rocks. And, you know, this is not how God works. This is, this is not his final resting place. I mean, but, but God dwells in the human heart. And even, even when he'd say in Isaiah, you know, I made the heavens. I made the universe. I made, you can't even see to the edge of the universe, but I made everything in it. Heaven is my throne. Earth is my footstool. But where's the place of my rest? And he's actually saying, you know, I made everything, but where's the place I can rest? Hallelujah, I want a final resting place, is what God wants. I mean, so we would think naturally that if, we, if God would have a final resting place, it would look greater than that outwardly. But it's not the case. This was the final resting place God ordained. I mean, because remember, the, the, the earthly tabernacle, you know, the earthly temple was just a transition. But this was God's final intent was that he would dwell in man once again. So you'd think it would look greater than this. Now to God, this was far greater. Because he took 120 people, I mean, that gave their lives, surrendered their lives to him. Didn't matter where they came from. I mean, remember, remember the, uh, you know, the, you know, the material that made the temple came from many different places. Right? Many different places. It hewed out of different quarries and, and wood came from different places and stones. And, but eventually when the temple came together and God came and dwelt in the temple, that was the important thing. And it's the same thing with these stones. As the scripture says, we are lively stones. We're living stones. You know, even, even the disciples were amazed at how great the temple was. Now we know that Herod rebuilt, you know, this is Solomon dedicating the temple. So it was destroyed, we know, rebuilt in Nehemiah's day, expanded, you know, in, in, in Herod's day. And, and, the, and the disciples said to, said to um, Jesus, what goodly stones are here? Because remember, they're from Galilee, they're from the backwater, but now here they are in the capital, everything's big and shiny and wow. You know, look at these stones. And, and Jesus is just saying, basically, don't pay attention to these stones. Amen. It may look fancy, but it's not fancy. Amen. You know, it may look like the real thing, but no, no, no. And he's actually, Jesus is addressing the stones that are the real part of the temple. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. He's actually looking at stones. You know, when, when Jesus came into his ministry, what did he do? Go, go to Peter, James, and John, come follow me. Went to Matthew, come follow me. Amen. Went to the woman at the well, they said, come follow me. And they began to call stones for the building. I mean, because he knew where those stones were. He knew what rubbish heap they were in. Didn't matter if they were a tax collector, if they were Zacchaeus, if they were the woman at the well, if they were a legion, if they were ignorant fishermen. That didn't matter. It doesn't matter where we came from. I mean, the thing that matters is where we're going. Hallelujah. That's the important thing. Amen. So we must never, ever focus on where we came from. We should focus on where we're going. That's the most important thing.
Hallelujah. So now Jesus began to call stones. Hallelujah. And, 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 and he began to gather these stones. But we know the intent of the temple is not to be a vacant temple. Right? He didn't just gather people to see if he could gather people, but he had an intent in gathering those people. So now here was 120 in the upper room. And I don't know if this is how it exactly was, but, you know, here was this looked far worse than this. I will agree here. Here was a bunch of ragtag people. You take the head of this group. He tried to kill a guy with a sword. And then he denies the God he's trying, he, he was professing to defend. And the reason he, he cut the guy's ear off is because he wasn't a swordsman, he was a fisherman. So, so now, oh, so the pastor's an attempted murderer, right? Matthew's a tax collector. Well, they're dodgy to begin with. You know, there's the woman at the well. Well, we know where she came from. Amen. Oh, look at these guys who profess to be the ministry. Ignorant, unlearned men. You know, how can you ever trust people who can't even sign their own name? They're not really here. You know, they haven't learned anything. But this was the people that, this is the caliber of people that God gathered. I mean, so it didn't matter what problems they had. Didn't matter what complexes they had. Didn't matter what pain they were carrying. God wasn't looking at the pain or the complexes or where they came. He said, come and follow me. Hallelujah. And they said, Lord, let's go. We'll follow you. Hallelujah. So, so he gathered these stones. So here they were. They weren't finally dressed. The upper room wasn't a big fancy place. This is in my opinion. They weren't finely dressed. They just looked like the common you know, people. Even the Lord himself, when he was walking through Jerusalem, I believe he just would have walked past many a people. Yep. And they would never have, never have noticed him. You know, it's just like you know, an amazement. I wish I should take a screen grab of it. I should do. But who's seen the deep call to the deep film? Okay, so there's this one part. And so Brother Bram's here, I guess. There's someone here and he's discerning the hearts and things. And you see a guy walk past with a newspaper. Who's seen it? This guy's walking past with a newspaper just like this along the platform. What did he get out of the service? <laughs> you know, it's on film. You can see it. He's just like reading a newspaper walking past. And here's God coming down. The Son of Man is being revealed. The most powerful. Jesus Christ is... You know, Brother Bram said that Jesus did more in his ministry than he did in his own earthly ministry. But he says, notice he did more, not me. He says, I'm just your brother. So God did far more in this end time than even in this whole scriptures being recorded. And a guy's walking past it reading a newspaper, missing the whole thing. We don't want to fall into that category of, of, of people. You say, could people really do that? Well, they did it when Jesus was here. They should do it when God is now in his church. So here they were, a ragtag bunch of people. And outwardly, you know, what are these people doing? But this was far more glorious. Remember, I started with the scripture from, from the Song of Solomon. Who is this that, that, you know, cometh up from the wilderness leaning upon her beloved? Who is this one? Who is this beloved? Hallelujah. So this was far greater glory, amen, than, than the temple. Because now God wasn't just dwelling in a temple of stone, but he was walking in his people. I mean, where exactly he intended to dwell, this is where he wanted to dwell. And sometimes we allow ourselves, not even just the devil, to belittle who we are in Christ. I'm just a common person. I'm not very smart. I'm not very, I'm just, I'm just average. I just hit average. You know, I just, I, I just passed my trick. I just got my degree. I just hit average. Solid, average, you know, anyway. But, I mean, look at the bride of Christ. Even the apostle Paul says, where's the learned? Where's the scribes among you? Where's the great people? You know, he's asking these questions. And many times we, you know, we even allow, the devil allows, you know, or we allow him or even ourselves to, we say, there's nothing special about us. Okay, maybe I'll just preach myself again. Welcome. <laughs> you know, but look at these people. Look at these guys. There's Mary, Peter, whoever, you know, nothing special about them. They weren't the celebrity of the city. No one really knew who they were. But in God's mind, hallelujah, here's my beloved. I mean, I've been waiting for her to come to the earth. And now I'm just not sending someone. I'm, I'm coming myself to gather her, hallelujah, to me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So this is, you know, you know, in God's mind, these ones, yeah. these were the these were the whole thrust. These are whole, his motivation, you say, to get up in the morning. Not that God sleeps, but you know, sometimes we get up and we've got such a drive. I've got to do a certain thing. 
Amen. I've got to, I've got to do this at work or I want to spend time with my family or whatever it is you want to do. I've got to, you know, God gets up in the morning, if I can say it that way, say, I want to spend time with my wife. Amen. I want to brood over her and I want to express my love to her. I want to walk with her through the day. You know, we're his motivation. Amen. Glory to God. And we look at ourselves saying, oh boy, what am I doing upon this earth? We have a purpose. I mean, God has given us a purpose, amen. And we should say, Lord, what is our purpose? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, it was funny. I was, um, fly- well, I don't know if it was funny, but I was flying back from um, Sister Val's funeral. And I don't know what, ha- however many thousand feet I am in that plane. You know, I'm thinking, what am I really here for? What, am I re- what are we really here for? <laughs> uh, now, I'm not just talking about sitting in a plane. I know why I'm in a plane. Because I just went to a funeral, now I'm coming home. So I know why I'm there. But why am I here? Why am I upon the earth? Is it, is it just to, you know, is it just to have, you know, is it just to have a nice family and maybe have a career, maybe have a nice church and, you know, have good friends and, you know, travel or whatever? Is, it, is that really it? Why are we here? You know, we should really think about that sometimes. The reason we're here is God wanted us here. And he wanted a place to express himself through. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we, you know, who is this that cometh up from the wilderness, leaning upon her beloved? We could go back to Genesis. I'm just going to leave it up there because um, yeah, we'll just leave it there. But, but I want you to think about that. Remember, the same Holy Ghost that came on the day of Pentecost is the same God that's come to us. The exactly the same one. Not a different God, not a lesser anointing, the same one. I mean, the same one that filled them and they went out, they overcame in their age and they spread the word and they were a living witness in whatever capacity they were ordained to be. If it was Dorcas making clothes for people, if it was people who went and preached, if it was those who just helped out, whatever it was, whatever their capacity was or whatever they were ordained to do rather, they did it. Amen. Every, every one of us in this room has a place in the body of Christ. Amen. Every single one of us is essential. I mean, just like Brother John Andy said, you know, we're all essential workers. Yeah, Amen. In the, in the body of Christ. Amen. We are all have a part to play. None of us are spectators. None of us are sitting on the grandstand eating the popcorn saying, go, go, go. No, no, we're on the field. Amen. So now we could go back to Genesis chapter 2 when, when, when Eve was taken out of Adam. And when God brought, when, when, when God brought Eve to Adam... He would begin to tell her, because remember, he's named all the animals. And he named them based on their character. He called the serpent, the serpent, because he is a serpent. The fox, a fox, right? The rat, cunning as a serpent. You know, you know, all those different sayings we have is because he, he named them by their nature. And so now when he's, when he's now beginning to speak to Eve, he says, now, this is bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall, she shall be called woman. Because she is taken out of man. So now he's not just identifying a different species. He's actually saying, this is part of me. You are part of me. You came out of me. Amen. And we're one flesh. Amen. Amen. So we're not two different kind of people. We're actually one. One. Hallelujah. Amen. So now this is so. This is now the question that's being raised is, who is this? And now here's the answer kind of unfolding, hopefully. Amen. You know, so so it wasn't Eve that... that, 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 that um, she didn't work out who she was. Adam told her who she was. Amen. And it's got to be the same thing with you and I. Let him tell you who you are. Amen. Because I'm persuaded. Amen. That we are the bride of Christ. I mean, we are the apple of his eye. We are his beloved. We are his redeemed ones. And the reason I can say that is not just because I'm quoting it from a book, is because God comes down, I mean, and vindicated says this so. I mean, because it's when he comes in behind his word and proves it, that's when all doubt can go. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord, you, even, even just to be convicted on your heart that you're wrong, that's the grace of God to you. Hallelujah. That's actually God dealing with you saying, child, come here. Child, walk with me. I want to show you who you really are. I don't want you caught up in this world and what everyone tells you, you know, that you should be. I want to show you who you're meant to be, who you really are. Hallelujah. So, so just as there was a question when, when, when Jesus went into uh, Jerusalem, who is this? If, that was this? if that was the question about the bridegroom, it'll be the same with the bride. Who is this? Who are these people? You often wonder that. Who am I? We've all had that kind of question. Who am I? 
you know, as you go from a child to an adult, there's always a question, where do I fit? Yeah, where do I fit? You know, you know, like you go to school, you try and fit in with these kind of people and maybe you want to try and go and join the cool kids and, you know, okay, just me anyway. And then you find out you don't fit there. So you go back to where you were and you realize who true friends really are, right? But, you know, you try and say, where do I fit? And, and there's always a trying to discover, I just need to know, where do I belong? And the Lord is here trying to say, this is where you belong. You belong with me, right? You belong to walk with me. I mean, this is where you fit. Hallelujah. You don't fit in the world. You can try and fit, but it's like putting a square peg in a round hole. You can force it so much, but it just doesn't seem to go. Sometimes it sticks, but it doesn't go through, right? So I'm like, oh, I, fit, I, you know, I finally fit here, but then you realize, no, I don't fit here. It's because the Lord is trying to stir you up, saying you don't belong in that. You're a square peg. Come fit in a square hole. What's the square hole, my word? You fit with me. Uh, I don't want to sound too jokey there, but amen. Now, we have to realize that with us, we're not walking alone. We can go to Song of Solomon again. Again, I, go, um, I don't have this on here, but Song of Solomon um, 6 and 13. Remember, it was more than just Jesus riding. It wasn't just a man on a donkey riding into Jerusalem. That was God. And the unseen realm angels were there. Hallelujah. God was coming into a city. And we have to recognize, and I, and, and, and I trust you already do, but you know, there's more than just us walking upon the earth. Amen. If I've repeated myself, well, I'll just keep, re sorry, i just repeat. You know, I had a uh, lecture, an organic chemistry lecture. He didn't give us any much handouts, but he just said, write down what I say. He says, if I repeat myself, there's a reason. You know, and it was the repeating bits that were really in the exams, not necessarily all the filler. And it wasn't filler because it was, you know, knowledge you needed to know, right? But it was, he said, the things I repeat, those are the things you should write down. So we're all listening. Is he going to repeat it? Is he not? And you write it down. And you know, so maybe I'm the same way. I don't know. But or anyway. Don't, don't say anything about my age. Anyway, Song of Solomon 6 and 13. It says, return, return, O Shulamite. Return, return, that we may look upon thee. What will ye see in the Shulamite? In other words, who is this? Who is this? What will you see in the Shulamite as it were the company of two armies? Now, when it speaks about the company of two armies, it's talking about the, the heavenly host and the natural host. So there's two armies. When the Shulamite's returning now, it's not just her returning. But then in the unseen realm, hallelujah, there's an army with her. There's angels of God in attendance. Amen. And this is from when, when Jacob was returning back to, to, to see his brother Esau. And the angels visited him. And he realized that there's actually two camps in this place. Or it's called Mahanaim. This place called Mahanaim. The place of two camps. So it wasn't just an earthly camp. It wasn't just Jacob and there's his family, there's his herds and his servants and things. No, there was more there than what he could see with a natural eye. But a visitation of angels came to him and he realized, I'm not just here walking alone. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, he still had to wrestle with the angel, be changed to be called Israel, a, you, know, a, you know, a prince with God. And, but he recognized it's actually not just me making this journey back to my homeland. Yeah. Hallelujah. But the angels of God are in attendance. Yes. So this is why this question was asked, what will you see in the Shulamite? Now, the Shulamite, we know, represents you and I. I mean, this, this, this love affair between Solomon and, you know, you, know, you know, the bride and the bridegroom between Solomon and the Shulamite, you know, this is an allegory speaking of us in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So now there's a question now, what will you see in this bride? Amen. You'll see, as it were, two armies. Hallelujah. There's the natural Hey, we're a mighty army of the Lord. Amen. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. A soldier in the army. Yeah. If I die, let me die in the army of the Lord. That's why I don't sing specials. <laughs> but, you know, we're a soldier. We're in an army. But it's not just us fighting this battle. Remember, we are fighting against spiritual wickedness, powers and high places, demon powers. Remember, this fight that we fight is not a natural fight. Amen. That's why you've got to be able to discern when the enemy comes into your mind. I mean, that's, I think the greatest problem, Brother Brown preaches a sermon, the greatest battle ever fought. 
right? And it's such an essential, amen, when we're walking through this life's journey because the battle is so much in the mind these days. I mean, in the dark angels, I mean, I mean, dark ages, rather, it was more of a, the sure it was demon powers fighting the believers, but they were physically tormented. They were physically tortured, right? It was a physical fight too. But here, it's all up in here. Amen. So we need to be able to discern when thoughts come into your mind and your emotions go up and down and you get and you, you're withdrawn and unhappy and you know complex and whatever more, what's causing it? Right? We need to be able to discern. It's a hold on. Is this my bridegroom? Is this my lovely Lord Jesus making me think this way? Um, if you feel that way, then no. Why well, does it feel like I'm going to have a heart attack? I'm all strung out and stressed and worried and flustrated. And Is this the Lord? We should just stop. You know, this world is so fast-paced. Just pull over and park. Sit. Get off the motorway. Park. Sit and say, is this God or is this Satan? There's only two. It's not, you know, it's not like a spectrum of fully God and kind of mainly God. And, you know, it's not like changing the heat on your, you know, in your car. It's cold or hot and you just turn the dial and it's mainly... You know, it's not a mixture. It's either God or Satan. Yeah. So we need to be able to really identify, Lord, is this you? Yeah. Yeah. And it's real simple. You know, Brother Bram was asked, how do I know I'm thinking the thoughts of God? Well, Brother Bram says, well, his thoughts are his word. Yeah. Right? That, you know, that's how you know if you're thinking the thoughts of God is because, well, is it the scripture? Mm -hmm. Is it the thoughts of peace? Right. Amen. Yeah. You know, Paul says, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are lovely, true. Think on those things. Hallelujah. Amen. Right. We say, well, this person did this to me. Well, that may be true, but it is true. Yes. Because whatsoever things are true are God's word. Yes. Right. right? So, you know, we need to be able to discern. Glory. Because if you can't discern an enemy, he will come and do what he wants yes. and he'll go. Yes. How is a battle won? A battle's won. You know, a battle is not necessarily just won on the battlefield. Yes, it's won in intelligence. Yes. You know where the enemy is, then you can move according to where the enemy is. Why did the king of Syria get so frustrated? He'd send his enemy, I mean, I mean, sorry, he'd send his troops into the enemy land, which was Israel, and, 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 and then the prophet would go to the king and say, they're coming here, go here. And then it would keep happening. And he thought, there's got to be a mole or a spy in my camp. He, he told his people, one of you is a traitor. You know? And then one of his men said, no, hold on. Don't you know that Israel's got a prophet? And he knows your thoughts in your bedchamber. So how did they win? I mean, how were they winning? Because they, they knew what the enemy was doing. But if they didn't know what they were doing, then Syria would have conquered them you know, because they were a far greater nation. Right? So it's intelligence. It, you know, it's in the intelligence. And even now what happens is, is how, how they try and win a war is they try and start thinking ahead of what the enemy command structure will think. So if you know that your enemy will do certain things, then you try and preempt what he's going to do, and then you can cut him off before he gets there. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So the devil studies us. I don't know why I'm going down this way, but here we are. You know, the devil studies us. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our mood. He knows our temperament. And he knows how to use it against us. Right? He knows because he studied us. So he, so he knows if I get them to feel this way about this thing, they'll do this. Yep. If I get them to feel this way about this thing, they'll do that. And he just pushes play. And exactly as he predicted, it happens. But we have a hidden source of strength. We have someone in us that can break that cycle. Amen. Remember, we have the right weapon to overcome the devil any place, any time, anywhere. Brother Ram said this end time message meets end time conditions. He said it was preached 50, 60 years ago. No, this end time message meets end time conditions. Amen. And the anointing of the Holy Ghost will defeat the devil any place, any time, anywhere. Amen. We have the soldier in the battlefield. Amen. The Holy Ghost himself. Amen. But you've got to let him come forth into your mind and conquer that thing. Amen. You can't just try and wrestle it in your own self. That's why you, the Bible says, draw nigh to God, resist the devil, and he shall flee from you. Hallelujah. Amen. But we have the battle. Remember, when the Shulamites there, a place of two armies. What is greater than the armies of heaven? What is greater? Remember, 
Our Lord Jesus went down to hell, took the keys of hell, death, and the grave, Hallelujah. totally stripped the devil, stripped him. Yeah. It's like marching into America and taking every single piece of armament they have, yeah. every single piece, and bring it home. Yeah. Every gun, every tank, every missile, every bomb, every plane, every ship, yeah. stripped, and they can't build them. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's like that. The devil can't, he, he has no weapon, in he, all he has is a bluff. You know, people, many, many nations around the world, they'll have military parades. And, the, and their enemies will examine the footage and they actually say, are those weapons really real? Here they are goose-stepping along all in one and, you know, carrying these big fandangled guns or these big tanks and, you know, driving along. And the enemies will say, is that actually real? Or is that actually just a mock? You know, a mock-up. It's like in World War II, the British during the Battle of Britain, when the Nazis were bombing England and so on, they would build fake planes just out of wood and, and put them on airfields. So the Nazis would think, oh, there's the enemy planes. We're going to bomb them. They're fake. But from that distance, they looked real. And that's how the devil does. He walks around with a fake gun, a fake fear, a fake torment, a fake worry, a fake what? Oh, this could happen. If, oh, you better. Oh, you're... Oh, you're you, no way you'll save your children. No way they're going to be there. No way this is going to happen. Oh, you know, no. All this fake kind of fear. But we really need to examine it with this. You know how they prove if photos have been, you know, photoshopped or not? People study them. A casual glance will say, well, that's real. But people will put it through a program and say, no, that's not real. There's one program we need to put the thoughts of the devil through is this program. Right? And it will show us actually if it's true or not. And he never says anything that's true. Amen. So, oh, is he really telling the truth? No. He's lying. Because he doesn't know the end. He knows his end. Right? But he doesn't know the end. Remember, as Brother Kaijo preached here, to be continued. There's always the to be continued chapter. Amen. This is not the end of the series. Amen. This is not the end of the program. Amen. There's always a next, a next season coming up to be continued. Hallelujah. That's why we must never say, well, I guess this is just how it's going to be. No, no. To be continued. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we, have a, we are a place of two armies. Who's ever seen the Lord come on the scene for you? Amen. Why, that's the heavenly host stepping down, taking, taking control. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So it's not just you walking around the earth. God comes down and proves himself Amen. in your life. Glory. Amen. Now, can we have this again? I'm going to actually use it. I just want to read this and just say, I'll say this. Is, oh, here we are. No, we'll go back this way. But you can't read that fast. Now, it's amazing how the Lord is not ashamed to be identified with us. He is not ashamed. He is not ashamed to be identified. Just like when, you know, we read in the Song of Solomon, you know, she's leaning on the arms of her beloved. Yeah. Amen. He's not ashamed to say, this is my woman. Yeah, right, right. Hallelujah. This is my wife. Yeah. Everything I am is hers. Everything she is is mine. Right. We're one. You can't, you can't separate us in any way. Hallelujah. This is how he looks at you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he says here, I think, Thou hast put, this is, this is Hebrews chapter 2. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put, in all, he, he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. For it became him of whom are all things, and by whom are all things, and bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he that sanctifieth, and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. So the one that does the sanctifying, I'm just going to speak in my language, the one that sanctifies and the ones who are sanctified are all of one. So now he came down, he became man to, to identify himself with human beings, right? To actually not just call a people 
and put them to one side, but actually that he would actually join himself with those people in such a way that you couldn't separate him and those people. I mean, just like saying like the bride, I mean, and the groom, they are one. So he came down as a man, I mean, to identify himself with you. Hallelujah. That when he did that, you can't separate him and the bride anymore. He can't separate himself from you. That's why he that sanctifieth and those who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Amen. So, so the reason, I, and he says, saying, I'll declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church will I sing praises unto thee. I mean, just think about God, the one who filled all time and space, the one who made all things. Even the angels appear filthy in his sight. The great holy God came down, became a man. Because there were people upon the earth, there was his bride on the earth. He says, I want her to lean on my arm. Walk out of this wilderness. Hallelujah. I want people to ask questions. Who is this? Who is this that leans upon the arm of her beloved? And so he became one of us. He became the poorest of the poor. Amen. That he'd be able to identify himself with human beings. That he'd say, actually, Adam's fallen race. They're part of me. Hallelujah. Amen. It's not just they're down here and I'm up here. No, no. I want them where I am. Glory. That's how great our God is. The one who's so great, he became so little. And Brother Am says that's actually what makes God so great. He can humble himself and become so little. Remember, to the natural eye, that doesn't make sense because they think of God as some big, you know, some great being that's some in some great eternity somewhere that's, you know, high and lofty. No, that's not how God is. God came down to where we are. Amen. And he, and, and, and he identified himself in such a way. Amen. That, so he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one. Who's been sanctified? Amen. I've been sanctified by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you've been sanctified by the blood of the Lamb, He's actually saying, no, no we're one. Amen. And He's not ashamed to call you brethren. He's not ashamed to call you family. And that word brethren, actually it means, um, actually speaks about a brother, like natural family. Hallelujah. Amen. So He's not actually ashamed to call you family. Amen. So remember, we're not some distant cousin someplace. Remember, we're his wife. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Amen. so we're the closest you can be as family is. Amen. And hallelujah. So, you know, why are you speaking about these things? Let's not be browbeaten. The whole purpose of this world right now is you. God's, God's heart, everything, his affections, everything is. He cares for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Ram says this in the un un unveiling of God. He says, I was reading a story some years ago, and in the story it said a great noble king, I forget the name of him, but uh, uh, just now I wasn't thinking about speaking of the story, perhaps fiction, but it leads us to a point that gives us a background on what we want to say. This king, he was such a noble king and had such a great, uh, and such a great lover of his subjects till one day, before his guard and his royalty, he said, Today you see me for your last time for many years. And his guard and his noble said to him, Good king, why do you say that? Are you going to a foreign country somewhere to become an alien? He said, No, I'm staying right here. Well, said, I'm just going out amongst my subjects. I'm going to become a peasant. I'm going to cut wood with the wood chopper. I'm going to till ground with the toiler. I'm going to prune the vines with those who prune the vines. I'm going to be one of them in order to get a better acquainted with what they're doing. And I love them, and I want to be more acquainted with them personally. You know, he's a king. He doesn't go and till ground. He doesn't, he doesn't work a garden. He doesn't live as a peasant. No, he lives in a palace. And there's always a separation between the people and the king. He said, no, no, this is actually, this king doesn't want to be this way. They won't know me. But yet I want to be acquainted with them in that way. And the next morning when his delegates and all of his people seen him, or the ones was in the palace, take off his crown, lay it down upon the seat, the throne, take his robe off and put on pe uh, peasant's clothes, walk out amongst the common people. Now in that little story, we find out then about God. They said to the king, King, we, we want you, we love you, we want you to remain king. But he wanted to become one of them, to know them better, that they would know him better. 
really what he was. See, really what he was. See, God is so misunderstood. Even, 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 you can say down through the Old Testament, you know, the people got their mind by the time when Jesus came. They had in their mind what God was. And the Lord's basically saying, no, no, you've got the wrong impression of me. You've got the wrong impression of what the word really is. So he came down in flesh to actually show them who he really was, that they actually would not be misunderstood. This is actually my heart. How I heal the sick, this is my care towards humanity. I raise the dead. I comfort those that have suffered loss. You know, I, I you know, restore sight to the blind. You know, I, I, I cast the devil out of lives. You know, this is actually who I am. I'm not some mean, angry God who just pours out judgment. No, I'm one of redemption. I want of healing. I mean, I want a restoration. Amen. Isn't what the word, and I think many times the message has been misunderstood. Yeah. Down through the ages, the Bible's been misunderstood. Yo, God, I say, has been misunderstood. They think he's three people up in heaven somewhere angry and, you know, this holy God that you just approached by ceremony. You don't approach him by ceremony. You approach him with a contrite, surrendered heart. Amen. Hallelujah. And he's not just somewhere far away, amen, but he's present upon the earth. The spirit is here working. Amen. You're following me. It's the same thing with the message. Many people, you know, for years, they have actually misunderstood the thrust of the message. This message is a message of grace. Yes. And that's not just turning a blind eye to sin. No, it actually gives you a power to overcome sin. It changes your nature that you can't do it no more. Not because, oh, I better keep myself a certain way. No, he changes your nature. I mean, that you actually walk according to his word. Hallelujah. I mean, you know, this is what the it, well maybe maybe I've just been living in a happy little bubble, but just leave me in my happy little bubble because I'm enjoying it. Amen. Just me and my Lord Jesus, it's wonderful. Glory. You know, but this message is a message of restoration. Amen. It's come to restore a people to their rightful position in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We know He is a God of judgment and wrath, sure, but it depends who you are in relation to the King. When John was told in the book of Revelation that the Lamb of God, you know, you know, he had prevailed. And you know, he was found worthy to take the book. And then he looked and he saw, oh, no, no, the line of the tribe of Judah had been found worthy to take the book. And he turned and he saw a lamb. It was the same person. I mean, but, but to some, he's a lamb. To the bride, he's the sacrifice. Right? He's their blood. He's their high priest. He's their offering. He's their guide. Isn't he? Amen. I mean, to some, he's that, right? Amen. Amen. But, but a lion represents a judge, a king, r cruel, you know, harsh. To some people, he will be that. But it depends what you've given your life to. If you've given your life to him now, he's your lamb, right? If you accept the blood now, he's your lamb. I remember there'll come a day where you won't be able to accept the blood. And then he'll be your lion. He'll be your judge. Hallelujah. So, you know, it all depends on, on, on your relationship with him. But he wants to be our lamb. Amen. Amen. See, to display to them what he really was, and that's what God did. He changed himself from being Jehovah God to become one of us, that he might suffer, he might taste death, he might know what the sting of death was and take the penalty of death upon himself. He laid aside his crown and his robe and became one of us. He washed feet with the lowly. He dwelt in tents with the poor. He slept in the woods and in the streets with those who were underprivileged. He become one of us that he might understand us better, that we might understand him better. Amen. That's why never ever think God don't understand you. He understands. He knows what it's like to be troubled. He knows what it's like to be sick. He knows what it's like to suffer loss. He knows what it's like to go hungry. He knows what it's like to be homeless. He knows what it's like to suffer hardship. He knows what it's like to be misunderstood. He knows what it's like to be made fun of. He knows what it's like to be rejected. He knows what it's like to, you know, you know, just be mocked and, and talk badly behind your back and, and, and slander and all those things. He knows what it's like. He's been there. That when we go through those things, amen, we say, Lord, you understand. You know, Brother Bram would pray for a, um, there's an experience in 1948. So he says, and now they bring me a little cross-eyed cross, cross -eyed girl with asthma-affected head. He says, here, uh, thou art here, Lord, to make her well. Now you who was bearing the cross through Jerusalem that morning, and when you fell, 
Then Simon the, um, uh, uh, the Cyrene, that colored man, came and helped you bear the cross. He says, God, I know you understand. And to prove to these people here in Phoenix that thou art no more respecter of um, that thou art no respecter of persons, I therefore rebuke these cross-eyed eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. Now keep your heads bowed, every one of you. Now, Almighty and om uh, Omnipotent God, let it be known today that you are God, and I be your servant, and that the people might know that thou art the only living God, and you have anointed me and sent me forth, and I speak not of my own words, but them words in which you revealed to me. Therefore, angel of God, you who told me to go, and if I'd be sincere, the people would believe. There'd be nothing stand before the prayer. I ask for this. I'm leaving Phoenix, and Lord, I love the country, and, and prove that thou art God, and I be your servant. Thou demon, I rebuke thee, come out of the child, in the name of Jesus Christ. Just keep your, and, and, and then now he's speaking to the little girl. Just keep your little eyes closed, honey. Now raise your head, but keep your eyes closed. Everybody keep your eyes closed. Now slowly open your eyes. Look towards me slowly. There they are. All right, her eyes are straight and normal. But you see, when he was talking to the Lord, he says, Lord, you understand. Lord, I know you understand. And God came down because he said, he said, you know, there was a, there's a colored man called Simon, the, you know, you're from Cyrene, who helped, bear, helped you bear the cross. Now, there's one of his little children here got cross eyes. He says, Lord, I know you understand. Do you talk to the Lord like that? Amen. Lord, I know you understand. Amen. And he wants you to say, and, and he wants to tell you, I understand. Amen. I understand what you're going through. Amen. I understand hardship because I've walked in it. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll just finish with these and then we'll, then we'll go. Now notice, all the glory that was in God is in his word. All the blessings that's in God is in his word. It's hid to the unbeliever by traditions. But see what I mean? But it's all in Christ. All that God was, he emptied himself, kinos, and came into Christ. And we into Christ are behind the veil. So all the blessings, all the glory that's in God is in his word. Amen. And he reveals it to us, doesn't he? Amen. Amen. This book, I trust, speaks to you like no other book. You know, during lockdown, I read a book I read quite a few times during my childhood. It was, you know, you know, a novel. And it was exactly as I remembered it. There's nothing more to it. But this, oh, this is totally different. Amen. So all the glory that's in God is in his word. Right? And then now he comes veiled into us. So now everything that was in Christ is in the bride. Now, now, he changed his amorphe. He changed from what he was to what he is. He never changes his nature, but on the day of Pentecost, he changed himself from being the son of man to the son of God. He came not with the people. He came in the people. See, the same God to carry his ministry on through this great age. No. I want this one. Sorry. He says, now, what has it done? Now, this is from the Feast of the Trumpets, as he said. He came in like, like flattery, speaking of the Antichrist. Sorry, this is very jumpy around, but, but now what has he done? He is bringing the Protestant Ecumenical Council of the World Council of Churches, the spirit of Antichrist upon both of them, bringing them to the slaughter, just like they did in the hour to call the bride. How? He loosed, loosed in the ecclesiastical church spirit, loosed upon what? Not upon the denominations, but upon the bride. But here you'll get it. The bride will not go through that time. When, you know, when, when everything shut down, all those things. He says, the bride will not go through that time. Um, the Bible says not the church will, but not the bride. Can't you see, ministers? Can't you see that, brethren? You say the church has to go through the persecution for the, for the perfection of it. The blood of Jesus Christ perfects the bride. I mean, a man who chooses a wife, don't put her through a bunch of punishment. I mean, he's already found grace too with her. She has found grace with him. Who is this that leans upon the arm of, of, of her beloved coming out of the wilderness? This is what she has found. I mean, we have found grace with him, right? We have found grace with our bridegroom. He engages to her, and if there is anything, he'll keep her from every place to turn her hand. His grace is so great upon them. And so it will be upon the bride, and so it is on the bride. I mean, we unworthy creatures deserving of hell, but his grace holds us through it. 
Look at how many lost and blind, how many, how many sinners there was in the world the hour I got saved. God saved me for a purpose, and I'm determined by his will to do that purpose. I don't care what anything else goes. I want to do it. Amen. Amen. But he says that the gra his, God's grace will be so great. Yes. Amen. Upon her, and so it is upon the bride. Amen. His yes. grace is so great upon us. Do you really? I don't think we, you know, you know, the thing is, if you live in a certain atmosphere, you, you just become acclimatized to it, right? Just like us, if we, you know, went from living at sea level, then we, then we went and lived at a place of high altitude, at first it would be a struggle. You'd remember, this is not how it is at sea level. It's harder to breathe and it's, you know, the air's thinner, a different kind of atmosphere, you know, but then you get used to it and it becomes normal. Amen. And it's the same thing when you come into the things of God. Because you've been living in an atmosphere in the world, amen, of unbelief and sin and demon powers moving and, and strife and anger and all those different things. But then the Lord calls you and he brings you out of that atmosphere. And he brings you into a heavenly atmosphere. And then it's just such a glorious place to live. Amen. But then we acclimatize to it. We get used to it. We should never get used to living in his grace. We should never get used to living in his presence. Amen? Because not everyone has this. And I'm just talking about every man, woman, and child around the world. You know, not everyone lives in his presence like we do, if you really know him. So we're talking about the grace of God is so great upon us. We shouldn't take that for granted. Amen? Amen? We should be so thankful. And uh, you know, I'm not saying you're not, but we should never take for granted that the Lord has just got his hands on us and he's guiding us through. Hallelujah, you know. It's just like, you just think of Peter, James, and John. There are many other fishermen. They weren't the only fishermen on the seas of Galilee, but God called them. There are many other tax collectors where Matthew was there, but God called him. There are many other women that went to the well of Samaria, but God called one. Hallelujah. There are many other Pharisees, but God called Paul. Amen. There are many other people like you, but God called you. Amen. Why? Because he was looking beyond the skin. He was looking beyond our intellect or maybe our culture, maybe our personality. He wasn't looking at those things. He was looking at a predestinated seed on the inside of you. Amen. And he called you because he saw that was in you. Amen. And that's why he called you. And we must never, ever take that for granted. That before the foundation of the world, God put a seed on the inside of you. And when he did that, the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. That God had already paved the way. Amen. That, that God had already purchased our salvation. Right? He'd already purchased our healing. He'd already given us power to conquer every devil. He'd given us the strength to overcome every circumstance. Amen. It was already purchased before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. And now we are just walking through life. Hallelujah. And if we've walked so far, do you not think we'll walk all the way? Amen. Do you not think we'll just be able to continue on? Amen. That's why I was thinking, you know, let's just... Don't worry about the past. Don't worry about what you see yourself to be. You know, they looked at Jesus riding into Jerusalem. Who is this? They're looking at the outward. And many times we just look at the outward. And this is going on, this is going on, this, you know, things we wrestle with. Just leave it. You know, many times we go around a mountain and fight the same demon because we don't recognize he's been conquered. Right? The same thing can come up, but you've got to recognize that at Calvary that thing was defeated and you've just got to bypass him and keep walking on. Recognize he's defeated. Right? But if he keeps coming back at you and you've got to pick up the sword and fight him again and you know, and then he'll just come back again, you've got to recognize he's conquered. You gotta, you know, isn't that right? Don't we need to recognize the devil's been defeated? He's nothing but a bluff. He's like a bunch of troops goose stepping down, you know, you know, you know, through the Red Square in Moscow with all fake weapons. But if we think he's armed and dangerous, then we'll just be living in fear. This may be very chopped up this morning, but take that scripture in Song of Solomon. Who is this that leans on the arm of her beloved coming out of the wilderness? You say, who am I? 
As Adam said to Eve, your bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, life of my life. Brother Bram said that the bride is bone of his bone, spirit of his spirit, power of his power. She is him. Why? Because we're one. You say, Lord, I'm actually here for a purpose. Amen. As, as, as the song goes, you know, he died to make men holy. Let us die to make men free. God's truth is marching on. You say, Lord, I'm not just going to, we're not just going to scrape through with the skin of our teeth. The Lord's going to carry us through. Have you ever just found yourself in a circumstance say, how did I get here? Right? But then if you look back, you see there's been all these providential things been happening, and you just happen to find yourself there. Who's found themselves in that kind of circumstance? You know, we're going to be sitting around the wedding supper table one day, and we're, and we're going to look and say, how did we get here? How did we honestly get here? And we'll know it was the Lord of glory got us here. Amen. Let's have the musicians, please. But you say, who am I? I'm the Lord's beloved. I'm his redeemed one. I'm his ransomed one. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's stand, shall we? Let's... um. I want to um I want to sing that song. Let's just, I just, I just want to let's just sing Burners Now a Lighter Brighter is my way. Let's sing that. I don't know what key it should be in, but sorry. G. Amen. Isn't it such a joy to walk with him? Amen. Isn't it wonderful? Amen. We're in G. Uh, you're probably gonna have to help me out. <clears throat> Burdens now are lighter, brighter is my way. It is such a joy to walk with Him. When this journey here is o'er, I'll set my feet on heaven's shore. Eternity of joy will just begin. Oh, glory, yes, glory, hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord, today I know I'm free. And He is with me, and if I stay close to Him, safe from harm and danger, I will be. Oh, when my Jesus saved me, and He washed my sins away, and He cast them in the bottom of the sea, and He, and he picked me up, and He turned me around, set my feet on higher ground, now I'm walking happy, glad, and free, amen. Oh, glory, yes, glory, hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord, today I know I'm free. And He is with me, and if I stay close to Him, oh, safe from harm and danger I will be. Oh, when my Jesus saved me, and He washed my sins away, and He cast it in the bottom of the sea, and He picked me up, and He turned me round, set my feet on higher ground, now I'm walking happy, glad, and free. Yes, glory, hallelujah, oh, praise the Lord, today I know I'm free, and He is with me, and if I stay close to Him, oh, safe from harm and danger I will be, oh, glory, yes, glory, hallelujah, oh, praise the Lord, today I know I'm free. And He is with me, and if I stay close to Him, all safe from harm and danger I will be. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's sing uh, one of them. Aren't you glad you're one of them? Amen. How are you one of them? He made me one of them. I surrender my life. He moved on my heart. I surrender my life. I'm one of them. One of them. One I'm of one them. of them. 
I'm so glad that I could say I'm one of them. Hallelujah. One of them. Yes, one of them. I'm so glad that I could say I'm one of them. They were gathered in the upper room, all praying in his name. They were baptized in the Holy Ghost and power of service came. Now what he did for them that day, he'll do for you the same. Amen. I'm so glad that I could say I'm one of them. Oh, one of them. I'm one of them. One of them. Oh, one of them. I'm so glad that I could say I'm one of them. One of them, hallelujah, one of them. I'm so glad that I could say I'm one of them. Though these people may not learn to be no boast of worldly fame, they have all received their Pentecost, baptized in Jesus' name, and are telling now both far and wide His power is yet the same. And I'm so glad that I could say I'm one of them. I'm one of them. I'm one of them. I'm so glad that I could say I'm one of them. One of them. Hallelujah. I'm one of them. I'm so glad that I could say I'm one of them. Come, my brother, seek this blessing that will cleanse your heart from sin. That will start the joy bells ringing and will keep your soul aflame. And it's burning now within my heart. Oh, glory in His name. I'm so glad that I could say I'm one of them. One of them, one of them. One of them, I'm one of them. I'm so glad that I could say I'm one of them. One of them, I'm one of them. One of them, I'm one of them. I'm so glad I could say I'm one of them. Oh, one of them, I'm one of them. One of them, I'm one of them. I'm so glad that I could say I'm one of them. I'm one of them. I'm one of them. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's just bow our heads in a word of prayer just, just as we go. Dear Lord Jesus, Lord, we want to thank you. You've made us one of them. Lord, it's nothing that we could merit. Lord, it's nothing we could do. Lord, all we did is, is responded to the call, Lord Jesus, and surrendered our lives. But it's because you moved on our hearts, Lord. Lord, you, Lord, and Lord, by your mercy, we are one of them. I just want to ask, dear God, that you would take these chopped up words, Lord, this morning. Lord, and may we, may we recognize, Lord, what you have made us to be. Lord, you, your grace is so great upon us. Lord, may we treasure you, O oh God, greater. May we thank you more. And Lord, may we appreciate, Lord, Lord, the atmosphere we dwell in every day, Lord, of your presence, Lord. Father, we don't want to take for granted, Lord, that we're Lord, that we're walking in your presence, O oh God. You called us in, Lord Jesus, Lord. You're the one who brought us to your side, dear God. And I just want to commit our lives into your hands, Lord. I just want to ask once again for those who are sick in body. Lord, may you touch them for your glory. Lord, anyone here, Lord, who may be troubled in spirit as well, Father, bring peace, O oh God. Bring comfort, Father. Lord, may you grant it, dear God. And I just ask, may you just dismiss us with your blessing now. Lord, in Jesus Christ's name we ask. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, you got a song there, Brother Armand? To the Lord. Battle belongs to the Lord. Sure thing. Amen. Amen. In heavenly armor, we enter the land. Amen. I mean, what key? What what key should that be? In? Yeah, mine. I mean, I mean, in heavenly armor we'll enter the land. The battle belongs to the Lord. No weapon that's fashioned against us will stand. 
The battle belongs to the Lord, and we sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord, and we sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. Power of darkness come in like a flood. The battle belongs to the Lord. He'll raise up a standard, the power of His blood. And the battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power, and strength. To the Lord, and we sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. When your enemy passes, in heart do not fear, because the battle belongs to the Lord. Take courage, my friend, your redemption is near, and the battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power, and strength. sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. Amen. God bless you, friends. You're just trusting Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's sing Mighty Warrior as we leave. Just a quick testimony. Brother Ben, thank you so much. Amen. Sister Melissa, you're here. What did we speak about yesterday? God don't make mistakes, eh? Amen. Yeah, this would be the last Sunday for Sunday school because the school holidays start. And then just before school starts again, then we get back into Sunday school. So we're ready for the school school week as well so remember week before it starts and week before it closes amen and then uh, another thing little Reuben remember what we spoke about the devil's just a bluff amen isn't God good he answers when you speak about him he comes and he answers over the pulpit brother Ben God bless you thank you so much let's stand and sing mighty warrior as we leave eh? amen I will not fear no host in camp me in Jesus Christ I'll always have the victory this is my hour this is my fight amen and I'll be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might I put forth my sword in the name of the Lord my bow will not turn back my sword will not return and see i am a mighty warrior i'm fearless in battle moving forward in the name of the lord hallelujah and i descend from a line of peace and i will reign for eternity with Jesus Christ. All you little children, you can come stand in front and sing the song with me. Come, you're invited. Come sing the song. I'll not draw back in times of failure. Cause when we fail, in me is the unfailing God. I'll come back bigger, better, harder wiser stronger for longer by the power of jesus i put forth my 
sword in the see those swords show that sword amen turn back my sword will not return empty I am a mighty warrior we're fearless in battle moving forward in the name of the Lord and I descend from a line of kings and I will reign for eternity, amen, with Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ. And every mountain, and every mountain will be moved in the name of the Lord. Every giant I will face, I'll defeat, amen. And every weapon that is formed against me will not stand. In Him is complete victory. And every mountain will be moved in the name of the Lord. Every giant that I face, I'll defeat. And every weapon that is formed against me will not stand. In Him is complete victory. I am a mighty warrior. I'm fearless in battle. I'm moving forward in the name of the Lord. And I descend from a line of kings. And I will reign for eternity with Jesus Christ. Listen, I'm a mighty warrior. I am a mighty warrior, I'm fearless in battle, moving forward in the name of the Lord, hallelujah, and I descend from a line of kings, and I will reign for eternity with Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ. Just stay here, children, while you're here. Can you put that chorus up again? It says, I descend from a line of... So who are you? You are royalty. You are deity. You might not realize it yet, but you've come from a line of kings. David, Solomon, all the great kings. You're from the same line. Doesn't make you anything different, young ones. Hey, remember that. You're a child of the, the king. Amen. And that's the Lord Jesus. So, amen. Would you help me with one song before we leave? Please, Papa. Would you want to start it? Okay, so you guys have to start it. One, two, three. It's Monday. I keep it quiet. It's bubbling, a bubbling, a bubbling. A... Parents, your turn. I think we can do better. Eh? I think we can go louder. Eh? Can we go louder? Let's just stop. Let's shut them out loud. We can go. Okay. You ready? Now, want your best. Let's do it. Children, it's bubbling. It's bubbling, it's bubbling in my soul. It's singing and laughing that Jesus made me all. Some folks don't understand it. How can I keep it quiet? It's bubbling, a bubbling, a bubbling. A... Sisters! We can do better, eh? We can, do, we can give it all. You guys ready? Brother, sing. We're going to sing. Brothers are next, eh? The brothers are next, so we're gonna have to sing this. Let's go to the brothers! It's bubbling, it's bubbling, it's bubbling in my soul, and it's singing and laughing. So Jesus made me whole. Some folks don't understand it. How can I keep it quiet? Hey, it's the, amen. Bubbling, bubbling, everyone. It's bubbling, it's bubbling, it's bubbling in my soul. They singing and laughing since Lord Jesus made me all. Some folks don't understand it. But
But how can I keep it quiet? It's bubbling, 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 bubbling. Now, the band! Amen. You're all dismissed in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much. And I keep it quiet. It's bubbling, 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 bubbling day and night.